coupling reactions. What do we need to know about them? Very important in organic chemistry. First objective of this lecture, number one, coupling reactions create carbon-carbon bonds. So think about it, that's a way to elongate an organic molecule. Number two here, coupling reactions allow alkyl, vinyl, and aryl groups to be connected. We've never seen anything like this before. Okay, so let's look at these key points here. Let's understand them. The first thing we should know is that when we do a coupling reaction, a very popular reagent that we're going to use is called the Gilman reagent. And notice that you see R2, that's two carbon base groups connected to CuLi. A more descriptive name, they sometimes call these things dialkyl lithium cuprates. Dialkyl because the R group is two alkyls and cuprate, right, is the Cu, lithium is the Li. Let's look at a specific example of a Gilman reagent. If the R group is only one carbon big, then it would be CH32Cli. We're not limited to this. We could make that R group uh, bigger. In fact, in this case, here he is a three carbon chain. That's another possible Gilman reagent. So let's first start out with how do we make these Gilman reagents, and then we'll look at how they are used in coupling reactions. So here's an example. To make a Gilman reagent, look what we're starting with. Two organolithium reagents. We're reacting it with CuI and the solvent THF. What we get as a product here is this. This is our Gilman reagent. And as a side product, not as important here, you get the plus Li with the iodide there. That's our side product. This is what we're getting. We're not concerned about the mechanism here. It's not important. We just have to know how to make them just in case we're going to do some kind of synthesis problem. Maybe we want to add the step where we actually create the Gilman. Okay, so now that we know how to make them, let's look at an actual coupling reaction. Notice I have my Gilman reagent on the right here. And look what I'm reacting it with. Key point here, it's an alkyl halide. So a coupling reaction is a Gilman reagent with an alkyl halide. It's very simple to predict the products of these reactions. We end up with simply this right here. And here's where we're going to see he lives up to his name, coupling. All you're doing is coupling this two carbon fragment right here of the alkyl halide with this two carbon fragment right here in the parentheses of the Gilman reagent. Notice right here in the product, these two carbons came from the alkyl halide. These two carbons came from the Gilman, and we've coupled those two fragments together into a long four carbon chain molecule. That's all that we're doing. One way to think about this in order to get to a quick product is if you look at your alkyl halide, all you're doing is replacing the halogen, in this case Cl, with whatever what's in the parentheses in the Gilman reagent. We'll see that a little bit later too. Now, one thing we should know is that this reaction, what's so great about it is that it's not limited to just alkyl groups. For instance, look at this example right here. Again, the method that I want you to use, remember, to get to quick product is look at the molecule on the left. Do you see where the BR is? We're going to replace that BR with what's ever in the parentheses of the Gilman reagent, which means if you did that, you would end up with this product. And just to prove that here, remember, this carbon chain was connected to the BR. It's no longer connected to the BR. It's now going to be connected to this fragment within the parentheses of the Gilman reagent. And notice we see that in the product. Here was the part of the molecule that came from the halogen side. Here's the part of the molecule that came from the Gilman. And by the way, too, here, we're not concerned with mechanism as well. Don't worry about that. Just know how to get to product. And what's unique about this example here, the molecule that we are starting with is not an alkyl halide. It's actually a vinyl halide. Notice that carbon, he's involved in a double bond. He's directly connected to the BR, which makes him a vinyl carbon. Coupling reactions can be used with vinyl type carbons. We're going to see that there are very few exceptions when it comes to coupling reactions. In fact, let's look at even another example. We could even do this with a coupling reaction. We can use a benzene aromatic ring here. 
and we can react it with our Gilman reagent and we end up with this right here as a result. Remember to understand how to get to product. We're starting with this molecule right here. The CL right there on that molecule is going to be replaced with what's ever in the parentheses of the Gilman. So that means that the Gilman reagent is here in the product and the original, in this case, aryl halide is this part of the product right here. So notice this technically could be classified almost as an aromatic reaction simply because we're starting with an aromatic molecule and we're getting a product. Remember, that's very unique because when we learned previously about aromaticity and aromatic reactions, that aromatic rings are not very reactive. But this is the great usefulness here of Gilman reagents is that we can even use aromatic rings as reagents here. And notice the method I'm giving you here works all the time. You replace the halogen with whatever's in the parentheses of the Gilman. No matter if it's an alkyl halide, a vinyl halide, or in this case, a halogen connected to a benzene ring. However, let's talk stereochemistry here. There is some considerations here. Notice, look at my reactant, in this case, a vinyl halide, and my Gilman reagent is only one carbon big. This is the product right here. Let's understand what happened. What I want you to see here is that if our original reactant had a trans double bond, in our coupling reactions with Gilman reagents, we end up with a trans bond as well. So one way we could think about this is that we can say the stereochemistry is preserved. This reaction is not gonna disrupt that trans bond. Whatever it starts out as, it's gonna stay as. So let's just make sure we see what got connected here. Remember, this part of the molecule that's connected to the Cl halogen is going to be connected or coupled with this carbon group right here in the parentheses of the Gilman. So this part right here came from the vinyl halide and this methyl right here came from the Gilman. So to make sure you understand what's going on here, look at this example right here. Again, we have another vinyl chloride, but this time the double bond is a cis double bond, which means, and look at our product here, the product remains as a cis double bond. So let's look at a sample problem here. Look at this one, sample problem one, provide the necessary alkyl halide required to react with this particular Gilman reagent in order to synthesize this molecule below. So think about it. We know that a coupling reaction has an alkyl halide with a Gilman. What we should first figure out is where is the Gilman reagent in our product? Notice our Gilman reagent has a three carbon long fragment here with a double bond. If you look at your product, you'll notice right here is a three carbon fragment with a double bond. And to just make sure we make the right connections here, these three carbons in our fragment, the green here, the blue, and the yellow, would be these carbons right here in the Gilman, the green, the blue, and the yellow right here. That means what's ever not in that little green box there in the product, whatever's left over, that means this carbon and the remaining carbons must come from the alkyl halide that we're gonna react, or we can say the alkyl halide that we're going to couple so all we have to do to get to the answer is take that red carbon and put a BR on it like this, and that means this is our answer. Think about it, if you take that alkyl halide, the five-membered ring with the BR here, and you couple it with the Gilman reagent, you would get that molecule right there as a product. So it works. What we're simply doing here is working backwards. Remember, this is great practice if you can go forwards and you can go backwards, then you really understand a reaction. This fully prepares us for our exam because sometimes a test question might want you to go backwards. Sometimes a test question is just what is the product? We have a way to handle either one. That's all that matters here. So what are our key points? What did we learn here? Number one, the first thing we saw was coupling reactions create carbon-carbon bonds. And number two, coupling reactions allow alkyl, vinyl, and aryl groups to be connected. This reaction does not discriminate. Many things could be used here, which makes 
these coupling reactions so very useful in organic chemistry.